Good morning, congregation. Good morning to those of you watching today. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a question I have to ask you today, and the question is this. What's weighing down your cross? What's weighing down your cross? Now, if you'll indulge me a little bit in the beginning, I have some historical things to tell you, and then at the end of this, my prayer is that I've answered that question and also caused you to examine what is weighing your cross down. I'm in Mark chapter 10 today. We'll be looking at a passage, verses 17 through 22, a very familiar passage. Mark 10, verses 17 through 22. I'm actually going to read it to you so we get the context, and then I'm going to go back and we're going to talk about it. Mark chapter 10, beginning in verse 17. And when he, that's Jesus, was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these I have observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lack, go thy way, sell whatsoever you have, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and he went away grieved, for he had great possessions." I'll be referring to some other passages in Scripture today, but that is the basic passage that I want us to look at today. What's weighing down your cross today? We first see, as we go back to verse 17, that we see this man come running to Jesus. You'll notice he's not walking. He's not sauntering over. He's running to Jesus. When we have Jesus in our life, we want to run to him. We want to kneel before him. We want to honor him and worship him. The difference is this man right here, notice what he says in verse 17. After he kneels to Jesus, he says, good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? The first thing I want you to see is that he's calling Jesus good master. Some translations call it teacher. Other translations call it rabbi. He does not, now this is important, he does not recognize Jesus as Messiah. He doesn't recognize him as Christ. He is not the Savior. He is, in this man's mind, because he is a first century Jewish man who's coming to a rabbi. And there's a reason why he's coming to do that. Because he doesn't see Jesus as deity, he sees him as a rabbi or a teacher or someone esteemed. There was a belief in the first century. Um, the Jewish people of that time looked at things in a two-age sense. And what I mean by that is, we read in Scripture where they talk about the present age is going to end. And that's true, because we all pass on. But they believed in a second age of eternal life. And what that meant was that they could get to heaven if they did good works. So their gospel was based on works. It was not based on grace. So this, we have to understand the mindset of this man as he came to Jesus. And as he said to Jesus, what may I do that I can inherit eternal life? Mm -hmm. His mindset was this. If I can get a rabbi or a mm -hmm. teacher on my side mm -hmm. to vouch for me, I've got a much better chance of getting into heaven. He's not recognizing who Jesus really is. And Jesus is going to correct him. And he's go we're going to go through this passage here. But I want you to understand the mindset of this man. That he was coming to Jesus saying, I need to do something more. Hmm. Now, you know, um, the Jewish people, that f there's 613 laws, I believe. And if you're an Orthodox Jew and you want to obey, you want to be as obedient as possible. Remember, there are many people even today that have rejected Christ as Savior, and they believe that they can get to heaven by being a good person or doing good works. That is where this man's coming from. And we're going to see his reaction when Jesus tells him the truth. So the first thing that Jesus is going to do with this man as he's educating him and teaching him is in verse 18. And Jesus said to him, why are you calling me good? Mm -hmm. There's none good, just God. He's meeting the man, first of all, where he lives. Mm -hmm. Because the man doesn't see him as God. Mm -hmm. And so he's saying to Jesus, first of all, Jesus says to him, Why are you calling me good? Mm -hmm. he, in other words, in your eyes, I'm just a man. Mm 
So why are you calling, oh, there's only one Ooh. good, it's God. There's only one good. Why are you yeah, calling yeah. me good? Yeah. See, he's got he's to reach this man. Uh, he's got to reach this man uh, where he lives before he can correct him mm -hmm. and tell him the truth. Amen. Okay? Now, having said that, I'm going to take us over to Romans 3 to a very, very familiar passage. This is what the Apostle Paul said, in talking about good and who's good. Romans 3, beginning in verse 10, says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of their way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. That is a quote from Psalm 14. So we're still talking Old Testament, but then Paul used it in the New Testament to prove that we can't do things on our own. We can't do things by good work because nobody's good, only God. Can we see that? Mm -hmm. Only God can do good. So the first thing Jesus does is he first says, now, why are you calling me good? There's only one person that's good. So now we have that situation. Now Jesus continues. Because this man, because of where his mindset is, Jesus then goes on in verse 19 and he says, You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and thy mother. Now he's telling this man this because these are the laws that the man is trying to follow. Mm -hmm. This is what he's trying to do to obtain eternal life. And so he says to Jesus, what must I do? And Jesus comes back and tells him all the things he shouldn't do. Don't commit adultery. Don't do this. Don't do that. In other words, it's not just what you do. It's what you don't do. And he's building up in this man to say, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show to you how impossible it is to obey the law. So you don't do all these things. But this man isn't having any of it. He's not having any of it because he believes in his mind sincerely and in his heart that he's a good person. Mm -hmm. And so after Jesus gives him all his commandments, look, this man comes back in verse 20. And he answered and said unto him, Master, notice he's still not calling him Messiah or Jesus. He's saying, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Give me a break. Are you serious? <laughs> now look. <laughs> I have committed sin after sin after sin after sin. I know you guys have. I know you have. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But here's this man in his arrogance. And really, I don't know if it's so much arrogance as it's ignorance. In his ignorance. He truly believes that he's kept all of this from his youth. Really? No. So Jesus is letting him think about all these things. Because, again, remember, this man wants eternal life. And he's hoping that this rabbi or this teacher will tell him how to get there. Mm -hmm. And he's building himself up by saying, you know what? I, I've kept all those. What, what else do I got to do? What's next? So, because Jesus is observing him and he already knows that this man is going to reject him. Jesus takes him out of the Old Testament. And he's about to bring him into the New Testament covenant that Jesus is going to fulfill. Look what he says in verse 21. Jesus is saying, okay, you say you've done all these things. There's one thing you lack. Go your way, sell whatever you have, and give to the poor. And then you will have treasures in heaven. Then after you do all that, come, take up your cross, and follow me. That's a whole lot of instruction. Now, this man was not expecting that, because we know that from the next verse that he walked away. But let's break down what Jesus is saying. Let's break this down. He's saying, okay, let's assume that you obey all the commandments. Let's assume you're as good as you think you are. There's still one thing you lack. You're holding on to something. Something is blocking you. This happens to be what's weighing this man's cross down. Okay? So he's saying, I want you to take everything you have, Sell it. Give it all to the poor. Now, I need you to do that first. Now, I can imagine this man thinking, now, wait a minute, Rabbi. Wait a minute, teacher. Um, if I give away everything I have, I'll be poor and they'll be rich. <laughs> what? That, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. So, as this man is pondering this, Jesus is giving him the answer. The answer is Jesus. The answer is not good works. The answer is not the law. The answer is Jesus. But he's, he's got to break this man's mindset. He's got to break his mindset to say, you got to get rid of your things. Now, let me clarify something to you. 
um, Jesus is not saying here that we can't have material things. Mm -hmm. He's not yeah. saying here you can't be rich. Mm -hmm. He's not saying you can't be prosperous. What he's saying is this man's possessions meant more to him mm -hmm. than his salvation. Mm -hmm. He wanted Heart. eternal life and he wanted his possessions. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay? Amen. There's a phrase. Mm -hmm. there, you never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. <laughs> Nobody takes anything with them. All right? I'm just mm -hmm. saying it. So this man's holding on to possessions. So Jesus is now saying, okay, you need to get rid of all your possessions, sell everything you have, and then you'll have treasure in heaven. Jesus talked about this back in Mark chap uh, Matthew chapter 6, back in the Sermon on the Mount. I'm quoting phrases and passages you already know, but it doesn't hurt to hear this again. Mm -hmm. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 and 20, Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth, where moth and rust corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. Didn't he just tell that man that? Mm -hmm. Treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust corrupts, where thieves do not break through and steal. So Jesus is saying, get rid of the stumbling block. Get rid of the thing that's stopping you from following me. Stop mm -hmm. thinking that it's all about material things and how good you are. Because I've already told you, only God is good. And I've already told you, I'm showing you, breaking you out of the Old Testament cycle and into the New Testament, that I am the way and the truth and the life. So he first instructs the man, sell everything, give it to the poor, you'll have treasures in heaven. Then the, what he says, after you do all that, and then come, take up the cross and follow me. That's salvation. He's offering the man salvation. He's offering the man salvation. Take up the cross and follow me. And so the question I asked at the beginning of this sermon was, what's weighing your cross down? What is stopping you from following Jesus? What is in your way? And we'll get to that again in a minute. But I want you to see that he said, take up your cross and follow me. Go with me to Matthew 16, or if you're just writing down passages and you can study them later. In Matthew 16, Jesus said this in verse 24. And following, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. That's what he's just telling this man. Mm -hmm. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Yeah. Whoever will lose his life for my sake will, will find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Mm -hmm. That's what this man was bargaining for. I want eternal life and I want my stuff. Mm -hmm. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Yes, a soul yeah. cannot be bought. Eternal life cannot be bought. It is a free gift. Mm -hmm. It is given to us. And here we see Jesus bringing him through the commandments, bringing him into the New Testament, mm -hmm. and saying, you can have eternal life. Take up your cross and follow me. That's the answer. You want to know about eternal life? Follow me. Take up the cross. But we must, we must look at this. Verse 22. This man made a poor decision. Verse 22 says, And he was sad at that saying, and he mm. went away grieved, for he had great possessions. He blew it. Mm. Now, let me say this to you. The Bible does not tell us if this man ever came to salvation. Mm -hmm. There's a parallel to this in Matthew 19. We read essentially the same words, yeah. but there's nowhere in Scripture that says that this man actually came to salvation and came to truth. Mm -hmm. We do, however, have a little clue that I just want to leave you with, and I, I don't like speculating about the Bible, and so I just want to leave this with you. If you go, <laughs> if you go back to verse 21, <laughs> beginning of verse 21, it says, Jesus beheld him and loved him him yeah. Oh, yeah. okay jesus loves those who are his children mm -hmm. and so we have a little clue a little insight that maybe at some point this man came back got rid of his possessions or whatever and he took up his cross again that's speculating a little but i think god gave us just a little little clue there so i go back to the original question what is weighing down your cross what is holding you back from following christ especially in those tough times what, what, what's weighing down your cross? Is it anger? Jealousy? Rage? Is it money? Possessions? Disappointment? Frustration? What is weighing down your cross that you can't pick it up and follow Christ? Is it doubt? You're not sure about things? Something is weighing down your cross. Things weighed my cross down. Remember, the Bible tells us that God will never put anything on us beyond what we can handle. And so while we take up our cross, and Jesus says, in this world you will have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I've overcome the world. He's given us the ability, 
and the faith to carry our cross and follow him no matter what happens in this world no matter who comes against us we have the cross of Jesus and that is what gets us into heaven Jesus and so unlike this man who walked away sad and just didn't want to face the fact that he didn't want to give up his possessions I ask you today what is weighing down your cross what is getting in the way of you carrying your cross today and tomorrow and the next day what is happening in your life what do you need to go to God with and confess what do you need to clean up in your life what do you need to do to get right with God mm -hmm. what's weighing down your cross I pray that this message has been a blessing to you congregation and those who are watching I encourage you to read these passages that we looked at today let the Holy Spirit speak to you God bless you and thanks for watching